Now we have Romero Ortega from, from France. Uh, I'm very happy to have him here. He's, I, I saw him talking probably eight years ago. It was a great inspiration for my PhD. So uh, I'm, I'm super eager to see what you have to say about Port Hamilton season. Thank you, very Thank you for being here. And thanks a lot for the invitation to participate in this workshop. And actually, when I got the invitation, I hesitated a lot because uh, what I do, uh, actually, these two keywords that you use for presentation and, and interaction are related to what I've been talking about, but it's in a different context. So okay. I'm going to talk about representation and the representation of a dynamical system. So we we'll try to convince you that uh, a good way to describe the system is Port Hamiltonian system. So that's part of the title. So that's the representation part. And the interaction, instead of interaction, I use the word interconnection, but it's uh, basically the same thing. So, okay, this is joint work with uh, many colleagues, former students, but basically my main co-author has been Arjen van der Skaff, as you probably know, and he's uh, sort of the leader in Port Hamiltonian systems. <coughs> so the motivation that we had is to propose a new paradigm for control theory, which is alternative to the existing one, which is signal processing, okay? And, uh, and the second message is that we tend to believe that a, a suitable way to describe the dynamics of the system if you want to do this uh, alternative way of doing control is Port Hamiltonian systems. And the reason being that Port Hamiltonian systems, they encrypt the information that you need in order to do this uh, new paradigm of control, okay? So that's, uh, that's the main message. And uh, so this is the classical controller uh, paradigm that we see in all textbooks that we teach our students and it's a signal processing viewpoint. So you have systems which are signal processors. So they are fed, inputs are, are identified, outputs are identified. And then you uh, have uh, specifications which are also given in terms of signals. So you want to track signals, you want to, to reject disturbances. So everything is given in terms of signals. And you're looking finally for a, another signal processor which we call the controller that you feed information in and then you design a control signal. So this is, this is really uh, all signal processing. Uh, of course, this is motivated by what Young Williams called the intelligent control paradigm. So the intelligent control paradigm means that you have sensors and actuators that identify inputs and outputs. And then when you have sensors and actuators, then this issue of uh, what is the input and what is the output of the plant becomes irrelevant because by the presence of sensors and actuators, you know what's the input and the output. But if you think philosophically, there are no inputs and outputs in systems. You, what you have is, is interconnection. So you really have, uh, you, you have uh, some available signals that you are going to interconnect with another device. And dep depending on, on considerations like impedance or, or uh, power or so on, one becomes the input, one becomes the output. So you think of the classical outlet. You have the voltage and the current. So which one is the input, which one is the output? Well, it depends on what you, what you connect to it. So, so sensors and actuators make this obvious that you have a causality relationship between inputs and outputs, but not in all applications is a good idea to think like that. So the, the, really the message is that, uh, okay, this is a very rich paradigm and have, we have a lot of his, uh, successes and so on, but probably for some problems, for some new problems, we have to think a little bit differently, okay? And that's the, the, the idea of passivity-based control. And that's a generic name that is used for, for this kind of controllers, where you adopt a different viewpoint, not signal processing, but energy processing or mass processing of entropy processing. I use energy as the generic word. But the idea is to think of the plant not as a, a signal transformation device, but as an energy transformation device. So the, the, the dynamics of the system transforms the energy from one form to the other, or dissipates energy. And then, and then what you want to do is to well, first of all, this theory is, is developed for, not for general mathematical systems, but basically for physical systems. And for physical systems, anyone has a pointer? No? Okay, okay I can, you have one? I'm sorry, I'm so used to using pointers. There. One, okay. Yeah, just press the Yeah, thank you. And so, as I said, we're interested in physical systems, and in physical systems, you, you usually satisfy a relationship like this. So you have uh, energy balance or power balance. So the stored energy is equal to supplied energy plus the dissipation. So we're interested in developing a theory for this class of systems. And how do you formulate this problem? Well, you want to preserve this property 
for your system after you do the control. But you want to modify uh, the, these three words. So instead of having a stored energy, you might add the qualifier a desired stored energy. You want to change the energy function, so you have now a new energy function. And you might also want to add uh, dissipation or remove dissipation. So you want to preserve this uh, equation after control. So for your control system, you want this to be, to be satisfied, but with a new energy function, with a new dissipation, with a new supply function. So this is, this is the key for passivity-based control. This is the idea. So passivity-based control essentially consists of two steps, ch changing the energy function and changing the, the dissipation structure, the damping structure. And there are basically two possible formulations to do this. One is the standard, what we call standard passivity-based control, where you think in terms of inputs and outputs, and you want to design state feedback, so the classical way. And the other one, which is the one I want to try to, to explain you now, is control by interconnection. So you don't make distinctions between inputs and outputs, and you think of controllers as another dynamical system that you interconnect with your system. And it's via, tr through this interconnection that you change the behavior of the system. Okay? Of course, it might be that you will have sensors and actuators, and you will, you will effectively design a control signal and effectively measure a signal. But thinking of control in this way is, is rich and is, is useful. Okay? So the, the one, one interesting uh, result is that we can prove uh, mathematically with a the theorem that this standard passivity-based control is really a particular case of control by interconnection. So if you do, if you, if you do your design, think in terms of inputs and outputs, and you do state feedback, well, it turns out that you could have done it thinking in terms of control by interconnection. So thinking in terms of controllers as dynamical systems, and then just projecting the dynamics of the, of the controller through into some subspace, and you will get the state feedback. So this provides a, a very nice uh, geometric framework that, you, that allows you to think of control in a different way. Of course, this is not new, and uh, you can think of the Watt governor as as one of the oldest, actually in the, in the Nile River, there were already controlled by interconnections. So if in, in, the, in the times of Ramses II, he had this nilometer, and he was controlling the gates of the, of the, of the Nile River by, 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 by putting a device which was um, something very similar to this. Okay? So it's controlled by interconnection. So you modify the behavior of the turbine by adding some, some uh, mechanical device that interacts with your, with your system to Is be controlled. No, no, this is the Watts governor. This is the Watts governor. It's, uh, it's called the Watts governor. It's, uh, many people think to say that uh, the Industrial Revolution in the, in the UK, in England, happened because of devices like this. So they, they were able to control the steam engines that were very difficult to control. And they introduced the Watts governor. This is a device, uh, well, I thought that everyone was familiar. The device operates in the following way. So the turbine starts spinning and you want to control this, the, the, the speed of the turbine. So because of centrifugal forces, these bolts open up and push down a lever here that will block the input of the steam. So that's the way this thing operates. And if you, if you want to uh, do this in, in a block diagram with inputs and outputs, it's very complicated. So you don't know what, what is the input and what is the output in this device. So it's, it's, it's not obvious. While the behavior of this is, is, is very robust and very, and very reliable. Okay? Actually, uh, let me tell you a little story. Uh, this uh, research started about 20 years ago, and uh, we have had a long time collaboration with Peugeot, the French uh, company, sending students, postdocs, myself, spending months over there. And we were never able to do anything relevant for them, frankly speaking. Okay? They, were <laughs> <laughs> they were very generous, they paid us, but we, we were never able to answer the questions that they were interested in. They were interested, at that time, they were interested in active suspension. But they didn't want to put act sensors and actuators. They didn't want to put uh, computers or gyroscopes or, or motors. So they, what they wanted to, to have is, is a sensible way to design an intelligent damper uh, spring system. And probably nonlinear, but we didn't have the theory to do that. So you are, we approached there and we said, okay, where is the input, where is the output? And what do you measure? No, you measure nothing. I mean, you have the chassis. <laughs> yeah. And then you start, they, you, we start asking questions. What is the friction model? There's not such a thing as friction model. <laughs> so there's just interaction between, between the wheel and the floor, and, the, and, and that's it. There, there, there are no inputs and outputs. So we, it was 10 years. <laughs> okay, we're very generous. They paid us a lot. But ne never, they never use any of the proposals we had. So, so that's an example of, of, uh, of uh, something that our theoreticians are, are, are not being able to answer. We don't, have, we don't have a theory to do this kind of designs. Another exact, exact example is in active filters for power systems. 
So after filters, you want to put a filter in between a, a, a utility and a load and to improve the power factor, to improve the efficiency of the energy. And the people immediately think in terms of signals, they immediately terms of, in, in terms of I want to inject the required current in order to put the voltage and, 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 and the current in phase. But that, that's not what you want. What you want is to equalize the energy. So what you, what you want is this device to be placed between the utility and the load to be such that if you have uh, a load which is inductive, to inject electric energy because you want it to behave like a resistor. You, you know, if you are electric engineers, you know that the optimal transfer of power is when what, what you see from the utility is a resistance, basically a resistance. So really the problem is a problem of equalizing energy. So you have to add the inductive electric energy that is missing. So if you think in terms of signals and in terms of angles between, then everything is linear. If you, if you want to think non-linearly, it's not possible because you don't have sinusoidal steady states, you have non-linear loads, you have switching devices. So do you see this straight jacket of thinking in terms of signals has, has, been, has been very harmful for this community. And they still do the designs like this. So these active filters are designed thinking in terms of signals. But okay, so we try to convince them that this is not the right way to go. Actually, in the session, two doors down there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> injecting signals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. PMU design. Yeah, 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 they're still injecting signals. So they do not think in terms of energy, they don't think in terms of interconnection, but they want this interconnection of systems. So this is a... <laughs> I can give you many examples. Another example is teleoperators. Also teleoperators, if you think in teleoperators in terms of controlling force and velocity, it's not the right way to think about it. You have to think in terms of transforming the delays into transmission lines, which is the work of Mark Spong and, 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 and Bob Anderson. So if you do that, if you think of teleoperators as interconnection of a human operator, which is just, just a, a kinematic uh, constraint, or just some, some springs and dampers, and the, and the object that you're grasping, which is another, another mechanical system, and then you think of it as all as interconnected systems. But you have to remember that with a human, it's a redundant system, so I can reach this point in many configurations. Yeah, well, I think of a simple scenario where you have just, some, for instance, just something to grasp, and then, uh, yeah, I, I, I understand this. I, I shouldn't have brought this example <laughs> to this audience. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew I was in, in the shaky ground. <laughs> <laughs> I talk about electrical systems. <laughs> okay, so there are many advantages of thinking in terms of energy uh, or mass instead of, uh, of thinking in terms of signals of generic, as I said, passivity-based control. So, and if you look at the literature of nonlinear control, it's basically high gain, high gain. Uh, euphemistically called nonlinear denomination, but it's you are injecting high gain. So you, you go to sessions in nonlinear control, and 90% of the papers, backstepping, forwarding, all these are high gain designs, high gain observers, which are, of course, they have bad performance, or nonlinearity cancellation. If you think in terms of shaping the energy instead of shaping the signals, then you can, you, first of all, you have a handle on performance because you are you're modifying the energy function and out of all the, all the assignable energy functions, you can select different ones. All of them will have a minimum at equilibrium if you want, but they have different shapes. And with the different shapes, you can in some way regulate the performance. And that's, that's very important and that's probably the most important problem in, 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 in applications. You're not interested in stability, you're interested in performance. So by I, I assuring that an equilibrium point is globally asymptotically stable, it's, it's, not, it's, it's of no interest for practitioners. What they want is to have good performance. They want to have a good transient behavior. And that you can do to up to some, to some point with uh, passivity-based control. Now, with pa passivity-based control, you start with a physical model. You, start, you respect the structure of the system. And you can incorporate uh, physical knowledge. Because if you think of your controller as another physical device, now these tuning knobs that you have to select are going to be dampers, springs, capacitances, and so on. And then you have some intuition on what is the effect of these tuning knobs on the overall behavior. Well, if you just run a model predictive control and generate 100 lines of code, uh, you don't know. You have a lot of parameters that you don't know how to select. They have no, no intuition how to do it. You just change, change the horizon, change the weights of your controller. But that, that is, is, is really trial, trial and error. There is no, no guidelines to do these things. This is one of the big stumbling blocks of this theory. And in my personal experience, uh, I collaborate with people who are practitioners or, or who work in different uh, fields which are not control guys, for instance, power guys or mechanical engineers. And the way to communicate with them 
which is a, a real lingua franca, is talking about energy. Talking about energy, talking about power, talking about dissipation, then we understand each other. If you go and talk about the brackets and this, well, they, 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 for they know, but they don't care. They, 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 what, they want, what they are interested in is, is in, in achieving performance, in achieving performance, not in doing fancy mathematics. And also for those who are <laughs> fancy mathematics, uh, <laughs> there is a nice uh, geometrical characterization of passivity-based control in terms of something which is called the Dirac structures. This is very, fun, very my, my co-author Ryan is very fond about these things and he works a lot on these things, I don't. Uh, but you can characterize uh, power conserving interconnections, I'm going to explain in a minute what is this, by a Dirac structures. And everything is captured in a very nice mathematical object, which is an extension of, of symplectic structures. It's called Dirac structures. <laughs> also, there, well, there's a famous result by Williams, Isidori, and, and Burns on pacifiable nonlinear systems. So you can characterize, again, geometrically, in terms of stable invertibility and relative degree, those systems for which you can transform into passive systems via state feedback. So there's a nice theory and there's a lot of uh, implications from, from the theoretical point of view. Let me start by giving you an example. This is an old example. It was reported in, in 1994, 1996. And at that time, people were interested in the problem of, uh, of controlling uh, manipulators with flexibility. Okay? And the reason why flexibility was interesting was because for the, not, not direct driven, but indirect driven manipulators where you have the motors on the base, the, the way to, tra to transfer the motion is through to the so-called harmonic drives. So the, the harmonic drives are devices which operate, uh, I am again in very shaky <laughs> thing. <laughs> I shouldn't talk about this, but okay. I, until now, I'm, I haven't said any, <laughs> so far so good. Okay. So these harmonic drives, as far as I understand, uh, operate in, in based, based on flexibility. So they induce, it's not flexibility of the links, but the flexibility of the joints, the joint flexibility. And there were several models to, uh, to, mo to model this, uh, to capture this phenomenon of flexibility on the joints. And one of them is actually proposed by, by Mark Spong and I think uh, uh, the, Italian, the Italian group of Nicosia is to, to consider that, that, that there is a, like a coil here, so some spring and that, that adds some degrees of freedom to your, to, your, to your mechanical system. So in this simple case, it's just one pendulum, but you can think of it as an n degree of freedom manipulator. And now you have a non directed mechanical system because you, you have only action on, let's say, in this, on this joint, and the other one is, is free. So the problem at that time was uh, how do you globally asymptotically stabilize this object, this n degree of freedom flexible manipulator, uh, without measuring velocities? Because one of the constraints is that you don't, you don't want to assume that they measure velocities because you have to install the taco generators and so on. And the solution was provided by a controller interconnection. So the, the solution is the controller is this rigid pendulum, these two springs and this damper, and then uh, they are interconnected with your, with your plant, with your manipulator through this spring. And what, what did you do? You have the, the energy of the manipulator, so it has this the momenta, the generalized coordinates, the generalized inertia matrix, and the potential energy. So this is given, this is the system to be controlled. Notice that you have uh, two, N, the, two N coordinates now and only N actuators. And then you add another mechanical system that you interconnect with the mechanical system. And this uh, mechanical system that you're adding is such that it has its, its kinetic energy, it has potential energy. All you want to do is to shape the, the, the function of the potential energy. So you add a new potential energy to these two springs. And the interconnection is established here, see, because the, this spring is storing some potential energy uh, which is proportional to the difference between QC, which is the controller coordinate, and QP2, okay? So uh, you can prove that uh, this inter interconnection is a power preserving interconnection, and therefore the energies, they just add up. So the energy of the overall system is now the sum of the energies. So now the new potential energy, the new kinetic is the sum of this plus this, that's not important, but the new potential energy will be the sum of this function plus this function, okay? Mm -hmm. And now the question is, if you're interested in, for instance, position control, so you want to place this manipulator in some fixed position, you want this new potential energy function to have a minimum where you want. And the question is, can you select uh, or give ranges of K1 and K2 such that this thing is, is happens, and also you have an additional uh, parameter to be tuned which is this delta. This delta is the slope. 
sorry, there's a mistake. It should be here at delta, delta of Q star, the slope of this virtual wall, okay? So it turns out that this was the solution and the controller turned out to be a very simple proportional cross derivative controller. <laughs> and without measuring, without measuring, notice that you are not measuring velocities, the damping that you inject in the controller is propagated to the plant. So this, this, is, this is one example of control by interconnection. It's very robust and actually, I think, is, is the standard now in, in flexion manipulators. <laughs> you, you don't need to do more than simple PD controllers, okay? And, and you can also prove that you can do it without injecting, uh, without modifying the kinetic energy. You can do it just with, with state feedback, static state feedback. So that's, that's one example of control by interconnection. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a, some symbols which are not appearing. This should be sigma C, sigma I, and sigma P. So how do you mathematically formulate this control by interconnection problem, or, or one way at least? Well, you think of, as I said, of the plan, which is standing here as an energy processing device. You do not necessarily distinguish it. I'm calling U and Y, but it's just for historical reasons. Uh, think of just the port variable. So you, you model as a multi-port, multi-port, and the variables that appear here are conjugate in the sense that the product is power. So for instance, voltage and current, forces and velocities, and so on. And it has an energy function. So you assume that it has a state, and then it's an energy function associated to it. And in the case of electrical systems, will be magnetic energy plus electric energy, kinetic potential, and so on. Okay. Now, and you also give your specifications in terms of energy. So you don't, you, you don't say, I want to track this signal, I want to reject the disturbance. And you said, I want to assign this new energy function, just like in the previous case. I achieved the objective of stabilizing the equilibrium that I want by shaping the energy function. So it's a byproduct of my, of my task. My task was to is to modify the energy function. And then you think of the controller again as an energy processor device. So this is the controller. So it's convenient to split it into two. The controller that is, that is providing the energy that you might need and the interconnection. So this is another part of the controller which we call the interconnection uh, part. So there's sigma C and sigma I. So sigma C has also its port variables, which might be again, they have to be conjugate in the sense that they have power and its state. So think of it, you have an electrical circuit and you have another electrical circuit and you're going to interconnect. So you want to control this electrical circuit by connecting with another electrical system. And uh, this interconnection, the only thing that you require for the interconnection is that it's power preserving. And power preserving means that the power that you have here is equal to the power that you have there. So this, this identity should hold true. Okay? Remember, uh, we assume that these variables are conjugate in the sense that the product is power. So what is this uh, interconnection system? It's just a lossless device. You don't want to add any losses, so you are just interconnecting. The easiest way is just to do the, the cables like this, which correspond to negative feedback interconnection, okay? But it turns out that you can think of something else, and actually, in order to solve the problem of control by interconnection, uh, here you have to s put something more sophisticated than just negative feedback interconnections. So you, you, we're gonna make this guy state-dependent and sometimes even dynamic, but the lossless device, okay? So what happens? Well, it's, it's easy to see that uh, the energy of the overall system is now the sum of the energy of the plant and the energy of the controller that you selected yourself. But here, here starts the problem because what you want to do is to shape the energy of this guy. So let, let's say for simplicity, I want to assign a minimum to this energy function, some point x star. But I cannot do it by just adding energy that lives in a different space. So then, then how, how do you do in order to couple these two energy functions, okay? So the way that we proposed, I, I'm gonna uh, present it in an in a informal way first, and then the formal way, is to generate invariant manifolds. So in, in the extended space, now you have here the state of the plant, the state of the controller. If you manage to generate surfaces where the trajectory leaves, and, and so they are called invariant manifolds, so you're gonna live in this manifold, you start in this manifold, you remain in the manifold all the time. Then the system leaves in some subspace that we can characterize, let's say, with a function. Okay? So if I make this function invariant, and the system leaves in there all the time. So now in this uh, space, I can define a new function that I call H the relax, which is the sum of my energy plus the composition of the controller energy evaluated on the manifold. So now this is a, a bona fide function of X and I can think of now assigning the minimum, okay? 
So if I, I, am, I, I am, I'm able to enforce uh, the, the condition that the trajectory leaves in this manifold, then I can do this energy shaping, okay? So then we have the, the problem that, first of all, you have to generate these invariant manifolds, okay? And this is a problem of solving the partial differential equation. And secondly, once you have these functions, now you, you are free to select an arbitrary energy function here in such a way that the sum of these two has the shape that you want, at least to have a minimum where you want. So that is the problem, okay? Okay? So let me very quickly, I'm sure you all know this, but uh, uh, some preliminaries on invariant manifolds, invariant sets. So first the definition, so consider a dynamical system like this, living in Rn. So we say that a set, which is the subspace of Rn, is invariant with respect to the flow of the system if this implication is true. If you start on the manifold, you remain on the manifold. And you can prove the following facts, which are um, quite easy to, to, to understand. Given the function d, which is differentiable, the set characterized by the roots of the function is invariant if and only if its time derivative evaluated on the manifold is equal to zero. So you can think in terms of, uh, if, if it were not equal to zero and you start in there, d dot is different from zero, then you will move away from it. So think of, of the foliation. So if you start in, in the function and the derivative is zero, you remain in the function, okay? And Romeo, uh, d doesn't have to be regular in any sense. Like m doesn't have to be a, a smooth submanifold co-dimension. Yeah, well, yeah, there you have, you have, you need these assumptions in order to make it more rigorous. Oh. Yeah, at this point, I mean, it's a little bit informal. That's why I put manifolds in quotes. I, I don't want to talk about all this stuff, <laughs> the topology behind. You can think just as invariant sets, but in order to make it a manifold, you have to have regularity and all these things. But uh, moreover, uh, if you think now of the foliation, I think I have a picture of foliation now. So the foliation is just different leaves of this manifold. So you add a constant here, so d of, d of x equal to kappa, where kappa is a real number. So the whole foliation, so all these level sets are invariant if and only if d dot is equal to zero. Not d dot evaluated on the manifold, but d dot is equal to zero. So this is the kind of object that we need to create. We need to create this invariant manifold. So what is this d dot equal to zero? Well, it's partial of d with respect to x, that I'm calling here nabla d times f. Okay. So in our case, f is given for you because it's your, your plan and your control that you're going to design. And what you want is to solve this partial differential equation to find these d's, these functions, okay? And that's, that's uh, the, part, the difficult part of this uh, control, control of interconnection, which actually appears in all, all constructive techniques for nonlinear control. The feedback linearization, you need to solve PDs, backstepping into solve PDs, so you always have to solve PDs. The, the algebraic equations or regard equations that you solve in linear systems now turn out to be PDs in nonlinear systems, so there's no way out, okay? Well, we know that in linear, linear time invariant systems, the set spanned by the eigenvectors of H invariants, so that's one simple case where, where we know how to create it, okay? But uh, actually, we need something more than just invariant sets because of the following. Remember, what we want to do we are, giving, we are giving the function h, and hc is free to me, okay? And now we want to create these functions f. So if the problem of finding the f depends on hx and hc, then it gets very complicated, because f will depend on h, h, h and hc, and then you have a nonlinear problem of energy shaping. So you would like to, to, to remain as simple as possible, so trying to make this f independent of h and hc. Okay, and these are called Casimir functions. Okay. So Casimir functions are a particular case of, of invariant uh, subspaces. So Casimir functions are functions which are, uh, whose derivative is zero independently of the energy function. Okay, so that's, that's well known in mechanics. And we can prove the following, the following proposition. So given a function C from Rn to Rm, it's assumed that it's such that these level sets, so this foliation, is invariant. Okay. Then, for all functions phi, I can select an arbitrary function phi. This new function that I'm creating here, notice that it lives in a bigger space, okay? I'm, I'm including the space, the state of the plan and the state of the controller will satisfy this inequality, which is what I want. I'm, I'm trying to construct left the functions in some way. So the way to couple the, the coordinates x and, and xi is through the generation of the invariant, the invariant sets, okay? So now, now once I have this, 
once I have this, now I can think of assigning a minimum to W and then invoke Lyapunov's theorem and Lasalle's theorem and so on. So, so that's, that's the idea. So uh, given C, you have to select HC and phi in such a way that W has, has the shape that you want. Okay. Now, uh, C is obtained, as I said, solving a partial differential equation. And, and, and that's the reason why we, we go to Casimir functions, okay? Now, it's, it is at this point that the use of port Hamiltonian systems is, is, is convenient. If you try to, to solve this problem of generating Casimir functions for a system represented in the classical way x dot equal fx u, then it's very complicated. It's, it's, it, you, you have no way of distinguishing uh, the energy, the interconnection, and so on. So that's why we, pr we propose to use for Hamiltonian models. So you represent your system in this particular form, okay? So this is a particular case of fx plus gxu. But you have, the, the f is written in such a way that you have identified the three main ingredients that you're interested in, okay? This matrix J is called the interconnection matrix and this is Q symmetric matrix uniformly in X. The matrix R is called the damping matrix and it's symmetric positive semi-definite. Okay. And H is the energy function. So it will be your kinetic plus potential energy or electric plus magnetic energy and so on. And this is just an input matrix and I, I wrote it in terms of U and Y, but you don't, you don't need necessarily, you will see that the, at the end of the day, you, you don't need to put sensors and actuators. You're gonna find a controller that you just couple the U and Y with the other dynamical system. So I'm calling U and Y, but it's not necessarily inputs and outputs. It's just my port variables that I'm going to interconnect with my other port variables, okay? So I got rid of this uh, necessity of sensors and actuators in some sense, okay? Even though, of course, many applications I will have. What is H again intuitively? H is the energy function. So in, in mechanical systems, it's kinetic energy plus potential energy. And in mechanical systems, this is zero I minus I zero. So you have the symplectic structure. So this is a generalization of this simple case of mechanical systems. So in mechanical systems, you might have damping, but then the damping will appear only in the second coordinates. Your X will be a position and momenta, and the J will be zero I minus I zero, okay? But you can also write electrical systems, electromechanical, many physical systems, chemical process, and so on in this form, okay? And it's easy to see if you take the derivative of H with respect to T, because of skew symmetry, this term disappears. It on, the only term that, that is retained in the derivative is this term, that because of, of non-negativity of R, this guy is, is non-positive, non so it's a dissipation. And th this, you, re you recover Nabla H times G, which is precisely Y, times U. So you recover uh, power. So this is, remember, our um, standing assumption is that these uh, variables are conjugate, so the product has units of power. So then this is just a rephrase, a mathematical statement of what I wrote at the beginning of systems which satisfy power conservation. So this is the power supplied to the system, sorry, the power supplied to the system, the dissipated power, and the power stored in, in, the, in the energy storing devices, okay? One, one important thing of these Port Hamiltonian systems is that uh, the structure is invariant on their power preserving interconnection. So you take two, two Port Hamiltonian systems and you interconnect them you interconnect them through, through power conservative interconnection, the overall system is still port Hamiltonian, and that's very important for us, okay? And okay, as I said, it has a nice uh, structure of the interconnection, and it turns out that these Casimir functions that I was talking about are univocally determined by the interconnection. So really, what's important for your, your controller design to be successful is that you have the right interconnection, and that's why you, 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 you allow yourself the possibility of changing the interconnection. So the, the original system has some interconnection structure, but with your block sigma i, you change the interconnection in such a way that now you have Casimir functions. So that actually this technique is called interconnection and damping assignment. So you change the interconnection and you change the damping in order to achieve your energy shaping, okay? Uh, you might think that, okay, uh, why, why do I want to write this thing? This is a particular case of f of x. But if you think in terms of modeling, uh, for instance, bond graph modeling, you immediately get this kind of representation. So in network modeling, uh, you do get automatically, the these are the Kirchhoff's laws, for instance, this is just the resistors, and this is just the energy stored in the, in the electrical or mechanical devices. So, so it's, it's physically uh, reasonable. Okay, so let me, I will just talk about the basic control by interconnection. I'm, I'm gonna write uh, J minus R, which is F, 
And this is the plant. So it satisfies this property as I just showed before. I removed the dissipation. And my control is uh, just for simplicity, think of nonlinear integrators. So I just put an input, integrate it, and then you multiply, uh, you apply a nonlinear function here, which is your energy. And it's clear that if you differentiate HC, you get HC dot equals UCYC. So this is also a Port Hamiltonian system with a very simple uh, structure. And let me say, again, for simplicity, just take the standard negative feedback interconnection. So I take the output of one and put it as an input and so on with the right sign. And you see that uh, the overall energy now satisfies this inequality. So the new energy is just the sum of this plus this, and it satisfies this, okay? So now, now we have to create the Casimir functions. Remember, our, our, our problem was how to find the C. So you want to find, this is a closed loop system. Once, once you put it, the connection together, which is again a Port Hamiltonian, this is the state of your controller, the state of your plant, and now you're looking for a function C such that this vector lies in the left kernel of this matrix. Because if you go and differentiate, remember the, the condition, the necessary sufficient condition for invariance is that the derivative of this function, which is the function that characterizes the manifold, should be equal to zero, okay? So you need C dot minus Xi dot equal to zero, which turns out to be nabla c times x dot minus xi dot. So you have to solve now this partial differential equation. You are given f, you are given g, and you need to find c. Okay? And this is the simplest version of control by interconnection, and you can, uh, in some cases, you can solve it. Otherwise, you have to change the interconnection. You have to, to go beyond uh, the simpler, the simple uh, negative feedback interconnection. So in these uh, Casimir constructions, they're always you will end up with these uh, kinds of PDEs. So you, you said that Casimir's are well defined. So how do you know that there is a solution to this? Uh, or you say you try it out, and if it doesn't, then you change it. Well, you can always check Frobenius theorem that gives you conditions. But if, if, you, if, you, if you cannot, or you cannot find the right one, because it also has to be a right one, then you want to change the interconnection or change the damping. And then you will get another, another matrix here. The you had on the previous slide is there's always a Casimir that you can... Uh, so if you're taking these four Hamiltonians, you can all... Is that what you're saying? No, no, there's not always a Casimir, no. There's not always. These PDs might not have a solution. This, if, this, if this matrix is full rank, there is no, no Casimir. So, so it, it's really a rank deficiency property of this matrix, the existence of the... So you have to make this rank deficient with a suitable choice. Here, we, I didn't have any degrees of freedom. Yeah, well, no, the F and the G are given. So this is, uh, I don't have any, ch any freedom here. Uh, this is a very restrictive case, but in the cases that we have explored later on, you add some matrices here through the interconnection, and then you induce a kernel to this matrix, and then you can solve. Oh, I see the zero, you can fix the zero, you can change. Yeah, and you can change also the F and the G by taking another output. Instead of taking the output G transpose now A, you take another output, and then, and then you will have another matrix here standing here. Okay? That, that's the, I, I don't have time to go through that, but this is just the very basic, which is very restrictive, this, this case, okay? Basically, it's only solvable for mechanical systems. If you go to electrical systems, we have something which is called the uh, ob uh, dissipation obstacle. You can prove that this PDE does not have a solution if you have resistors which are dissipating energy at the equilibrium, which is called pervasive dissipation. So if you take, for instance, a series RLC circuit, that's okay, but if you take a parallel RLC circuit, you're in trouble. You, you can prove that you cannot solve the PD. So there is a connection between solvability of the PD and the dissipation structure of the system. Okay, okay so now then, I think it's my last slide. Uh, uh, we can actually prove that control by interconnection contains a state feedback PDC. So in the state feedback PDC, you take the classical approach U and Y, and then you try to find a state feedback, you want to try a controller, such that the new system after you do the feedback will have an, a, another energy function, okay? But it turns out that uh, if the control by interconnection PD has a solution, then you can select any HC and, and compute this, this object here and this turns out to be a static state feedback that will do the energy shaping for you, okay? So what is this? It's just, remember the control interconnection is another dynamical system that has its dynamics. But if you project these dynamics into the manifold that you created, which is what you're doing when you, when you evaluate this, you evaluate the function only on the manifold, 
Then you recover a static controller, which turns out to be the static state feedback passivity-based controller. And you can, you can generalize this term to other variations of passivity-based control. So it's always possible to prove that uh, by restricting your control vector connection to, to, to the manifolds that you created, you recover static state feedback, which is standard passivity-based control. Okay. So now we have a richer framework, and we, I think it's more, more uh, alluring in some sense to think of control as interconnecting dynamical systems instead of feeding back signals and measuring and feeding back signals. So that's why I thought that this uh, kind of talk would, might be interesting for you. I, I'm true. So I have a question that I've had for probably six years. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you have to solve your PDE to find gas in your function, solving that PDE can become a nightmare if your nonlinear if the, your your nonlinear system is really complicated. Have you ever tried solving a PDE numerically? Yes, yes. Actually, there's a group in UTC which is doing this, which is solving these PDs numerically. So they just, they just create a table. Of, um, the controller will now be in a, in a table. So they solve it numerically. But if we want to do, if we want to publish papers. No, <laughs> no I know. <laughs> but for practical purposes, yeah, people solve it numerically. OK, interesting. People solve, people solve it numerically. OK, I'll yeah. probably get there. Yeah, but let me say something that uh, the, the, this PD that I wrote here, you have no degrees of freedom. So everything is given, F and G. But the, the whole idea of, of control interconnection is to give degrees of freedom so that it's not solving a, an, a PD that is given. It's a PD where you have some free matrices that you select, which are precisely the interconnection matrix and the damping matrix, which are free to you. As long as it's skew-symmetric and symmetric positive indefinitely, you can put whatever you want. And that gives you degree of freedom to solve the, the PD. And for instance, for mechanical systems, we prove, we, we solve the PDs if you have interactuation degree one. So we, we prove that you can solve these corresponding PDs for mechanical systems explicitly with formulas for interactuation degree one. So that's a case where you have a complete solution. Any other questions? And is that uh, direct structures, which are in what sense you, you can speak to that? Uh, so so it's a plecky hand is true. So what is that, the last thing you said when you put, you said the pet thing and... Uh, well, he, he, he likes math and he's good at math. I'm not good at math. So what is that? <laughs> 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 well, uh, I was educated in Russia. <laughs> what is the, what is this, uh, the Dirac structures is, uh, how can I put it? it it's, it's, a, it's a space, okay? It's a, it's a space where you distinguish, divide the signals into flows and efforts. And you want to characterize all the efforts are flows whose, whose product is zero, so are power preserving. And that gives you some geometric structure. So the Dirac structure, you have to introduce a suitable uh, inner product, which is sign indefinite inner product, and then define it using this inner product. Okay, so we're, we're more seriously sticking to you. So, I mean, so think about these customers. I mean, maybe I have to tell you, they're very intriguing. Uh, I mean, this is a, a, now I understand also your there's this great paper in this Journal of Rational Mechanics, John. Yeah. But anyhow, you know, so, so the thing is, you know, the Casimirs are somehow, you know, you're trying to get them to be some conservation. Laws. Yeah. And what is actually sort of upsetting the calculation is when there's dissipativeness. Yes. But in some ways, you want that. The dissipativeness is the quote stability. Yeah, it's a nuisance of this gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the bad, bad dissipation, you might have dissipation in the right places, but in some bad, bad places. Yeah, you don't have this uh, metal space. This. Yes. So what is that, I mean, you know, this, uh, there's this uh, guy in particular, Jay Marsh, who used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. actually you is, quote in your book this word. Really it's exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, he, he's a big fan. Control, of control the Lagrangians. Yeah, exactly. It's a particular so case of Porto <laughs> that. You know, there's too much dissipation to compute Casimir's in engineering systems, which is exactly sort of what I heard you say, mm -hmm. in, you know, in this parallel RLC and the series RLC example. So, I mean, what, so what is the, you don't think that the idea is to prove the conditions under which you can, is it possible to sort of say under these conditions you can get an interconnection so as to get a C? Are those kinds of theorems available to 
Well, there are mathematicians actually in Kant State University, in KTH, in Stockholm, studying these PDs from the purely mathematical point of view. So the question is, are they solve them? And they get, they get, they characterize F and G's for which it is solvable. Solvable, and I mean, you can, of course, you can always invoke Frobenius, but then you have to be able to solve it analytically, give an analytic expression for that. So there, there are results like that. I, I just mentioned our result for mechanical systems. So if it's on the actuation degree one, yeah. mechanical system, then we can explicitly solve the PDEs. So that, that's also, and for electrical machines, we can also solve the PDEs, for general electrical machines. So the, the, because it's, as I said, we have degrees of freedom. It, this is a PD which is parameterized in terms of functions that are free to you, which is precisely modifying the damping and the interconnection. So by doing that, you, you can solve the PDs. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, we're going to. Okay, thank, thank you. you.